Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Union UCC. We're so glad you're here. We're so glad those of you uh, logging on are here as well or joining us later on during the week. Uh, welcome to worship. After uh, worship today, we invite you to come to the coffee hour. We'll have a congregational meeting there. Um, come to hear what the leadership planning team has been doing for the last year. It's an exciting time and lots of good stuff to eat too. Today, we'll be celebrating communion. Everyone is welcome to this table of God's love and grace. Uh, you'll be served in your seats, so uh, please wait to eat and drink until a pastor invites you to do so. And if you're at home, this is a good time for you to get uh, things that represent communion for you as well. Now, I'll note that there, we're doing things a little bit differently for communion today, and I'll say more during the sermon, but today is worldwide communion, and so folks from all around the country and around the world will be sharing in this holy meal that we treasure, and uh, so in honor of this uh, unity and diversity that we have with other Christians around the world, we have different kinds of bread on the tray, um, some of our members have baked the bread and we've purchased some of the items. Uh, many of the breads represent breads from other cultures and countries, different flavors, different textures, uh, different people and traditions. Same God though, and same life-saving meal that we come to know through Jesus. Uh, don't worry, there will also be the usual uh, bread as well on the bread tray, as well as the gluten-free, which is the pre-packaged cup that has a gluten-free cracker on top. Both red wine and white juice will be on the cup tray. Uh, here at Union, we welcome everyone to God's table, knowing that no matter who you are and where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. worship series come to the table on World Communion Sunday. This day is a global celebration of a sacred ritual that helps us remember Jesus' life and ministry and connects us with our Christian ancestors and siblings across time and space. There is great joy to be found at God's table, joy in vibrant relationships that nurture and sustain this community, joy in the sharing of our gifts and resources, joy in the journey as we work towards a more just and equitable world. recognize that joy is a practice, not just a happy feeling. We open ourselves to the joy that comes with justice. We make room at this table for joy in all its forms. At this time, those who are gathered here, I invite you to rise and welcome each other to this time of worship and to this place of belonging, sending love to those who worship with us at home. Morning.
At this time, we're gonna invite all of our younger friends to come forward, but we're only gonna sing the song once today, which means that all the adults need to really belt it out and do the, do the motions, or I'm just gonna be standing up here doing them by myself, which is okay. celebrate our common communion table with people all over the world. Through Jesus, we are brought together, and no matter how we got there, believing in the host of this table makes our joy complete. Let us share our stories, our compassion, our sympathy as part of one human family that shares the love of Christ in the breaking of the bread. Hear now the scripture from the second chapter of the letter of the Philippians that was written by the Apostle Paul when he was in prison, followed by remembrance of what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew. Imagine those early Christian Philippians gathered at a table, reading these words to one another and remembering the words of Jesus. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status, no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly, incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever, so that all created beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried, will bow in worship before, Jesus, before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the sovereign. What I'm getting at, friends, is that you should simply keep on doing what you've done from the beginning. When I was living among you, you lived in responsive obedience. Now that I'm separated from you, keep it up. Better yet, redouble your efforts. Be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. That energy is God's energy, an energy deep within you. God is willing and working at what will give the most pleasure. Do you remember the story Jesus told his disciples 
about the two sons who were asked to work in their father's vineyard. A man had two sons. He went up to the first and said, son, go out for the day and work in the vineyard. The son answered, I don't want to. Later on, he thought, be thought better of it and went. The father gave the same command to the second son. He answered, sure, glad to, but he never went. So Jesus asked, which of the two sons did what the father asked? The disciple said, the first. Jesus said, yes, and I tell you that crooks and outcasts are going to precede you into God's kingdom. John came to you showing you the right road. You turned up your noses at him, but the crooks and outcasts believed him. Even when you saw their changed lives, you didn't care enough to change and believe him. Hear, hear. Oh 
you so much. It was beautiful. Thanks. You may have heard me talk about how when I was a kid, my sister and I used to play what we called take and eat. Yeah, that's right. We would take white bread and cut it into cubes. I'm, I don't know why, but we would smash it too. And uh, grape juice, and we would play communion at home. And you will not be surprised to know that I was always the one who had to say the words of the pastor. Take and eat, take and drink. I know, I know, I was a strange little child. <clears throat> but looking back, it reminds me how I loved growing up in the church and how I loved how the church made me feel welcomed and loved by God. This is the last Sunday of this worship series theme that we've been using called Come to the Table. And we close it with sharing communion today, the ultimate table of God's hospitality, God's grace and love, God's peace and hope and joy. And on this communion Sunday, it is worldwide communion where you heard me say that many Christians around the country and the world will be also taking communion, communion today uh, to celebrate our diversity and our unity in Christ. Reverend Ben David Hensley, who helped to write the series that we've been using, says this, by being part of the communion table, we have something in common with millions of people across the planet, people who speak different languages, live completely different lives, eat different food, and have different ideas about who Jesus is and what it means to be a Christian. It's healthy, even joyful, to remember that we have things in common with people we don't even understand or know, or people who might even make us angry or with whom we disagree. Because recognizing that we have something in common is the first step in healing, healing the wounds that separate us as human beings from one another. And he says, on World Communion Sunday, the primary message is that we share something throughout history and across continents, the holiness and meaning of this meal, this feast. We have the same mind with Christians who lived thousands of years ago in the past, and we remain connected with Christians who haven't even been born yet. God is at work in us at this table across time and space. As Paul wrote in the letter to the Philippians, we have the same love and a partnership in the Spirit through our connection to one another across the table of Holy Communion. Imagine what we can accomplish as partners in the Holy Spirit as we seek to abolish spiritual and physical hunger. Today, we are also holding congregational forums, gatherings where you are invited to, after worship, come and be part of meetings that will talk about what the leadership planning team has been doing over the last year. About 40 of our leaders have been working together to um, dream God's dream, to hope God's hope, uh, to envision God's future here in Nefs. So please plan to stay um, and meet with us. Why has the LPT, the leadership planning team, been doing this work this past year? If you're on the LPT or consistory, could you raise your hand so folks know some of who you are, right? So those are folks who you can look to um, and share um, ideas and questions with. Um, the work, one of the, one of the results of our work is that we are, we kind of recommitted, we've recommitted to uh, three words three goals of being relevant, engaged, and growing. Union has been God's church here in this community since 1755 for 268 years. That's a lot of communion services. Now, I don't know if since 1755, if we've been cutting up bread into cubes uh, or serving it on these kind of trays or serving uh, wine or juice into cups. I think juice is actually kind of new. Um, but regardless of how we've been doing it for 268 years, uh, that's a lot of bread and juice and wine. And that's a lot of people being fed by God's Spirit through this holy meal, being fed physically and spiritually at this table. For me, as one of your pastors, that's also part of my why. Why do I do this work as a pastor? 
Why did I call the LPT together to dream God's dream? And why do I love to play take and eat as a kid and now as a pastor? Because as God's church, we are meant to keep coming to this table. And we are meant to keep welcoming people at this table. We are called to keep finding ways to feed each other, both physically and spiritually. In the 268 years of the life of God's church here, many people have come to this table looking to fill their hearts and minds and bodies and souls. And God has shown up every time. And may it be that we show up every time as well. Partners in God's spirit. Luke 12, 48 says, From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Another translation says it this way, Great gifts mean great responsibilities. Greater gifts mean greater responsibilities. We've been given the great gifts here at NEFS, and we have much more to give and much more to do with those gifts. I can't wait to see what God has planned for us. So welcome to God's table, and I hope you'll come to coffee hour to hear more. As we move into a time of prayer, I wanted to tell you a little bit about behind how we're doing communion today. I invited bakers in our church to bake some of the breads for communion, and we purchased some things as well. Some of these breads will also be at coffee hour for you to enjoy. Um, I want to thank our bakers. Uh, you will find on these trays everything from banana bread, zucchini bread, pumpkin bread. Um, you will even find some chocolate chips in some of them. You'll find uh, rustic white bread, uh, challah bread, matzah crackers, pumpernickel, cornbread, tortillas. Uh, you'll even find someone who made the bread that we use when we do First Communion with our kids. Uh, that recipe has been made. And so thanks to all of our bakers. I've heard of this being done in other churches where people will gather breads uh, that have been made from the congregation uh, as well as recipes from other countries and cultures. It's a reminder that not everybody takes communion the same way we do. Not everybody uses the same kind of bread or the same kind of uh, juice or grape juice or the same kind of trays. Um, it's a reminder uh, that we're unified and diverse. So when you see the bread tray, notice the different colors and shapes and flavors and smells uh, that symbolize different traditions and cultures, that symbolize different beliefs and practices and preferences and opinions, that symbolizes different climates and geographies and ingredients that symbolizes diversity and beauty and creativity in God's people. The bread also symbolizes our shared unity and diversity and our humanity and faith. It symbolizes the shared need to eat, to eat food and to be nourished by food. It symbolizes our shared yearning for God's love and grace and for our souls and spirits to be fed. The bread symbolizes our shared care for our elders and our shared love for our children and our shared hope for peace in the world. So notice the bread on the trays, maybe even try a new kind of bread. As I said, the regular bread will be there as well as a gluten-free wafer in a cup. Um, and notice that, and, and we have so much bread that you can even have two or three pieces when the tray passes you, so uh, you can enjoy that as well. And as I said, there's more at coffee hour. So we thank our bakers, but we also thank Carrie Snyder and Deb Romig and our consistory members who, every time we have communion, prepare the trays. Uh, they did warn me, because I helped them this time a little bit too, um, and they did warn me. They said, now, we don't want the congregation to get used to having homemade bread all the time. So um, I, di I did not promise that, but I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing that. Um, and so the prayer I'm using today talks about various breads as we acknowledge our differences and celebrate our oneness here and around the world. I can't quote the source of the prayer. I wouldn't, wasn't able to relocate it. But let's sing and then pray.
also is unleavened bread that reminds us of reminds us of all who eat their bread in haste. It symbolizes for us all the refugees who, like the ancient Israelites, leave their homes and flee from danger. May it remind us, too, of the homeless in our own community and in our country and around the world. We pray, O oh God, for your church among those with no place to call home. May we learn from their searching. May we be a place of welcome and hospitality. Fry bread reminds us of Africa, the birthplace of humankind, where Christianity continues to flourish. It also reminds us of a legacy of slavery and of people who endured. We pray, O oh God, for your church in places where it flourishes, and we confess the times and places where we have enslaved our siblings. May we learn from the vibrant faith of our African brothers and sisters. May we build a more just and peaceable world. Nam Chaki is a Cambodian bread that reminds us of Asia, where Christians are a minority among Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, and others. It represents for us the ways our faith calls us beyond our culture and reminds us of our siblings who are persecuted for their beliefs. We pray, O oh God, for your church in places where Christianity is dangerous, politically or socially. May we learn from the steadfast faith of our Asian brothers and sisters and walk with Jesus through every trial. Tortillas remind us of Central and South America where faith and culture have colored one another beautifully, but also a place where Christians live with violence, drugs, and conflict as a daily reality. We pray, O oh God, for your church and places beset by violence and still colored by hope. May we learn from the persistent faith of our Latino and Latina siblings, and may we look upon them with compassion as our neighbors. The white rustic bread reminds us of Europe with its vast cathedrals that are often empty. It represents those who keep the faith alive in lean times and reminds us that the church is not a building, but a community of people. We pray, O oh God, for your church in places where its power is diminished and its followers are few. May we learn from the age-old faith of our European siblings. May we live our faith so that our faith might live. Cornbread reminds us of Native Americans who first recognize gods in the rhythms of nature reminds us that the land we call home once belonged to others. We pray, O oh God, for your church as it exists in every land. May we learn from the faith of our Native American siblings that may we care for the land and all those who call it home. Come, Holy Spirit, dwell in these breads and in this cup, that they might be for us the food we need to nourish and strengthen us to be your love and grace in the world. Come, dwell in your people of every land and language, that we might be united with one another to be the body of Christ in every corner of the world today. We pray in your holy name. Amen. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Your bulletins are packed with opportunities to serve and learn here at Union. You still have today to stop by the Red Tomato in Orfield to get some pizza or sandwiches or salad, whatever you choose. Um, all weekend they have been tallying their sales and 5% of their total sales for the weekend will help us get closer to our goal so we can host our um, Feed My Starving Children event in March. So please be sure to order from the Red Tomato today. This Tuesday, October 3rd, is our first Golden Times of the year. Um, and that's a, it will be downstairs for our senior adults. This Wednesday, October 4th, 
is our first God First Wednesday, which begins with a supper, and then there's some time for fellowship, followed by some breakouts for kids, youth, and adults. This Saturday, Saturday, October 7th, is a women's brunch. There's information on how to sign up and participate. And today is the last day to share donations of supplies and money for the Chemo Bags event in memory of Ronnie Fabian, which will be held October 15th. The next Faith on Tap at Corn Finds will be Wednesday, October 11th. And then on November 11th, we will be having, going out to the Phantoms hockey game. There's information on how to buy tickets, and please be sure to do so by October 15th. Trunk or Treat is happening on October 21st, so if you would like to sign up, there's, in, there's information on how to sign up to decorate your car and hand out candy that day. And then there will be a new prayer and meditation time at 7 p.m. on October 24th called Breathe, so please be sure to join us that evening. There's plenty for kids and youth going on here, including this kids sneaker stroll for hunger on October 22nd, as well as all youth from grades 6 through 12th are invited to join and participate in the sleep out for homelessness on October 14th. We still need members to respond to the information form and survey that you received uh, back in June. It's especially important that we receive your contact information and your membership status. So let us know that, and there are extra copies of that paper form in the lobby. There's a box there you can return it to. You can also complete the form online as well. Because of you, our church changes lives. So we thank you for your offerings to God of your time and talent and treasure.
everyone is welcome to this meal of God's love and grace. You may be seated. Listen, the body breathes in together and out. As close as breath, the holy is present with us, reminding us that there is always room for us, room for all. So we lift up our hearts, and the family says we lift them up to God. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Holy Living One because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always, for always is when God is with us. I invite you to open both your palms upward in the sign language, forgive. We thank you, Creator God, that you formed every one of us, giving us your image, the desire for relationship. Now place your hands together in the sign meaning to be with. We thank you, Sustainer God, that you are here with us and call us to be with one and for one another. Bring your hands close to your face in the sign for prayer. Become aware of your breath on your hands. We thank you, God, for breathing into us the breath of life. Even when we have turned away, you have remained with us close as breath. Help us to remain close with one another, offering the breath of life wherever we can. And so we open our eyes, our hands, and our hearts to your will for us, as told to us through your prophets. We join our voices together, praising you along with all who do, have ever done so, and ever will do so. It, it is, is right, right to give, give our thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. especially those others considered unworthy. Let us remind ourselves by saying, the Lord is present with everyone. The, the Lord, Lord is present is with everyone. everyone. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ liberated by his life and witness. Be with us, Holy Spirit. Fill us so you can move through us, welcoming all to the family. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things are ready.
Christ broken for you. precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep and preserve you until eternal life. much of us. It asks us not to rely on expecting to feel good all the time in order to do good in the world. It shows us that we can have fuller, more invigorating lives when we choose to cultivate a practice of joy by staying fully present to ourselves and to one another, 
and by staying open to the unexpected movements of the Spirit. The grace of God abounds, the invitation of Christ is wide, the power of the Holy Spirit will surprise us every time. May the blessings of joy that you find here go with you and move through you to others wherever you go this week. Let the people say, Amen. 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 And I'll see you at coffee hour.